What's up everybody? This is uh, Big on the Basics, squatting. You know, squatting is one of my favorite lifts, which is a good thing because it is one of the three power lifts. And it's the first one, so it's the one that really gets, uh, sets the tone for one's performance in a meet. Um, I also believe it's the most technical of the three lifts. I think there's just an, so much room for variation within uh, the squat. Um, and that being said, you know, before I get into you know, how I set up for a squat, um, the second someone tells you that there's one way to squat or that this is the one way to squat, that's the second you should stop listening to them because um, that's not the case. Every body is different, different leverages, different strengths, different flexibility levels. And so the way you squat is gonna depend on all that. So keep that in mind. For me, when I squat, and my squatting style has changed over the years as well. When I started powerlifting, I took a pretty traditional uh, grip on the bar, you know, just past the rings, overhand like this. Uh, and, that was, and that worked fine, but I found that as I got, I guess, bigger and maybe my shoulder mobility decreased a little bit, I started to get a lot of bicep tendonitis. And um, I didn't know that's what it was from at first, but after the process of elimination, I realized that that was kind of the main culprit. And so now, so I've made my grip go really wide. So I grab all the way out to the collars. Um, that's something just to play with. Uh, and then, like I said, it changed over time with me, so it may change over time with you. So uh, I do get a lot of questions about my, my wide grip on the squat bar when I'm squatting. And um, you know, it's not for a mechanical advantage or anything like that. I mean, I think if the more narrow you're able to grip comfortably and without aggravating any kind of elbow or shoulder issues, generally the better, because that allows you to keep a, a tighter uh, back position. Um, but for me, I just have to take a wide grip. And I think you'll see more, it tends to happen more with the, the bigger guys and the smaller guys is, you know, the bigger guys were less mobile and whatnot. Um, so that's, that's my hand grip. I always come, you know, I come up, I approach, get that set. Then there is, and the next thing I do is I get my back placement. And so for that, again, it's gonna be individual. Um, you know, and there's, you know, you watch, you watch five great squatters, you'll see five different back positions. So for me, uh, it just, the way my, my traps are and my scapula, there's just a, a ridge there that the bar fits in pretty well, and that's where I put it. And so it's kind of, it's low bar, not super low, but, and that's what feels best, and the bar just sits there. It's something to play with, you know? Um, some guys put it higher on their traps. Uh, I find that to be kind of uncomfortable, and also, if it's on your traps and you have fairly big traps, then the bar has less surface area to sit on. So the nice thing about going on the scapula is you're basically maximizing the surface area that the bar is covering. So you have more points of contact, which should help with balance. So I get that set. And then so once the bar is there, a lot of times what I'll do is, and people will have noticed this, that I kind of, shake a little bit and that's, I wanna feel the knurling in my back just to know the bar is gripping and to feel that it's, you know, it's not gonna move, it's not gonna slip. And so then foot placement coming out is, you know, is not as important. If you're in a mono, obviously you gotta set your foot placement, but oh well, I usually don't squat in a mono. So foot placement, for me, I take a, I'd say a moderately wide stance. You know, I basically, it's beyond shoulder width. My feet angle out slightly, maybe like a 45 degree angle. Um, and, but that's the thing to play with. You know, some people put their feet more inward. Some people take a more narrow stance. Some people take a crazy wide stance, rotate super outward, you know, and there's great squatters of all those styles. So just, especially in the off season, try all the different styles, see what works for you. Um, so that's my bar setup. Then when I'm, once I'm set, that's when, you know, head placement comes into play. And you'll hear some people say, you gotta look straight up at the ceiling. Some people say stay, stay straight forward. That, I don't think there's a right or wrong way. 
I tend to stare kind of straight and at a downward angle. Um, and I like to pick a point that's very central and just focus on that. I think it's important to choose a central focus point just to maintain your balance. Because some people, you won't know it when you're doing it, but if you look at video or someone else watches you, you may favor one side over the other, especially if there may be an injury uh, going on. So that helps you stay balanced. Um, and so then once I get my foot placement and I've got my, what I'm focusing on, then it's, you know, big breath there, whether I have a belt on or not, the belt makes it easier because you can feel your diaphragm expanding into it, you know, and then I start my descent. Um, with the actual squat descent, um, I focus on most of the pressure being evenly distributed on my foot. Um, yeah, everyone, you, know, you never don't want to squat on your toes, but some of you will say you want to squat sitting back on your heels. I think you want more just to, you know, if anything, the middle of the foot, because if you've got the pressure on the middle of your foot, then it's going to be front and back as well. Um, and then, you know, the two, the two movements that do the squat are a hip hinge movement and a knee flexion movement. And different people will say, start with one, start with the other. Well, I think you, you do both. Um, and so I'll initiate both at the same time. And, you know, uh, some people will have much more of a hip hinge than knee flexion, which is usually going to be a wider stance squat, more posterior chain dominant. So you will have a lot of knee flexion and not a lot of hip hinge, which will be more quad dominant depends on your strengths and weaknesses as well as your mobility. Um, mine is pretty, uh, I would say, down the middle as far as those two things. So then I start my descent. That, the main focus as I'm doing that is, uh, is my back tightness. You know, because that's the kind of thing when the weight's heavy enough, especially if you're in wraps, you know, the failure could likely come in your mid-back where it pitches you forward if you can't support the weight. Um, and so what I, one thing that I envision that helps is I think about there being basically like a boulder on my back as opposed to a bar. And the reason for that is if you think about just the bar is, you know, this is not a lot of service area. This is a small thing. And I think subconsciously you may not engage your entire back to support it but if you envision kind of a boulder or something covering your entire back that you have to support, it just, it's like a mental cue to, to engage your entire upper back against it. So that's something that helps me. Um, and then that, that is especially important as you're approaching the hole because when you hit the hole in reverse direction, that's when you're most likely to get pitched forward. And that's where, you know, I tell people, you know, fight, you fight the bar because the bar is going to be trying to throw you forward and that's where you have to, you know, you won't see it because of the weight, but you should actively be trying to thrust your back back into the bar when you hit the hole. Um, then the other thing that I focus on other than back tightness is basically just sinking my hips between my heels um, and kind of really between the heels is where I'm focusing on because if it's forward of that, then my knees are coming too far forward, it pushes the weight on the toes. If I'm going behind my heels, then I'm going to sit too far back, and especially in wraps where the load is essentially heavier than you can actually support on your own without wraps, then you can really get pitched forward. So I really think about being central, dropping my hips between my heels, and going until basically until I hit parallel and then coming up. Um, I think the descent, the proper descent is going to set you up for the proper ascent. So I think the descent is more important. And if you basically, if you keep, if you have that dialed in, then coming up is going to be, you know, um, not a piece of cake, but it's going to be more straightforward. So, um, one thing on weight progression, I think with squatting, with all lifting, but especially squatting, it's important to warm up incrementally and with the actual movement. So I'll do some stretching beforehand, some mobility work, but I think the vast majority of my warming up is with the actual squat. 
I always start with just the bar, uh, which some people might think is silly, but I think you can't be too careful. And then, you know, I don't go up any more than one red plate per side at a time. I just, you know, think the, if you make too big of a jump, then it's too much of a shock on your body. And you got, you know, your back, your knees, your hips, you know, a lot of stuff is loaded on a squat. So you kind of want to be careful and make sure you're ready for it. Um, so yeah, so that's how I progress the weights. And all right, so got some weight on the bar. And that's the thing you also notice, you know, I say warm up with just the bar, um, but depending on your mobility flexibility, you'll find that with very little weight on the bar, it can be harder to actually get all the way down to depth. You should certainly try for it, but sometimes it takes a little weight to help. That's the case with me. Just to demonstrate, you know, here's the bar floated. I get my, my grip in, you know, I like to make, I like to really kind of sink my hands in there just to, you know, the more you feel that the bar is, is sturdy and attached to you, the better, because you just don't want, I mean, the heavier it gets, I mean, even just a, a millimeter of movement or roll can just, can kind of make or break a good squat. So get my hand placement, get it really tight. The other thing I do as I come in is I actively bring my elbows in. Um, the more you can have your elbows forward and under you, the better. Um, you know, when you watch me squat, I'm not the best at this. I mean, my elbows do go back, but a lot of, a lot of lifting is about the intent. Um, just like, you know, heavy weight, the intent should be to explosively move it. It's not going to be explosive because the weight is heavy. So I've got my, uh, got my hand placement on the bar, dig my grip in, rotate my elbows forward as much as I can. Then, you know, one thing I like to do, you know, these are all just personal tweaks and everyone, you know, you develop your own kind of ritual, but I stand, I get chest to chest with the, or chest to the bar. And this way I can kind of, I look at the, the edges of the central knurling just to make sure that I'm centered. But I do have a tendency to sometimes set up a little bit too far to the right. Um, so I try and avoid that as much as possible. And then from here, you know, I dip down, I get it right there in my, below my traps on that ridge with my scapula. I'll dig in just so that it's, it's, I really feel it in there. Get, you know, a, a shoulder length, foot, shoulder width foot placement just to get it out of the rack. Bring it out, step back. And then here, get, you know, my, my point of focus, which is, you know, forward and slightly down. Get my breath, and then I start the movement. You know, I'm flexing at the knees and hinge, hinging at the hips. Weight centered on my feet as I come down, down, down keeping my back tight. And then as I hit the hole, I'm gonna engage my back and stand straight up, pushing with all of my feet, not my heels, not my toes, but everything. And then, so yeah. Just remember, you know, be safe when you're lifting. I mean, if, if you're approaching anything close to failure or maximal weight, Make sure you have at least one spotter, ideally side spotters. Um, have stoppers in place. If you got straps, use straps. Um, you know, it's not worth getting hurt just to satisfy your ego in the gym. Um, if you have any questions or comments, just shoot them below and check out this next video.